This animal is using a tool, Pan's nearest relative, the chimpanzee, and tool using comes as naturally to him as it does to you and me. Jane Goodall first observed wild chimpanzees using tools in 1960. She defines tool as some object used as an extension of the hand or foot in order to attain a specific goal. Today, in Tanzania's Gombe National Park, Dr. Goodall and her associates continue their study of chimpanzee tool using, looking for new insights into early man's first attempts to cope with his environment. Every day, in the course of his normal activities, the chimpanzee handles the natural objects around him, and by doing this, he becomes familiar with them and develops the motor skills necessary to use some of them as tools. Sometimes he must prepare his food. He separates the edible from the waste with his fingers, lips and teeth. Similar techniques are important in tool using and tool making. Each night, the chimpanzee builds a sleeping nest, bending, holding, and carefully interweaving branches to form a platform in the trees. This is not strictly tool use, but an example of sophisticated manipulation. The chimpanzee's anatomy is well adapted to tool using. He can sit and stand upright, which frees his hands to manipulate objects around him. He has a fine precision grip of thumb and forefinger, despite the fact that his thumb is very short. This precision grip is used again and again in social grooming, a favorite occupation of resting chimpanzees. The infant pom, six months old, reaches out for a leaf. Goblin, one year, is fascinated by a branch. Chimpanzee infants and youngsters use natural objects just as our children use toys. The chimpanzee's curiosity seems limitless, and certainly it contributes to the development of a wide range of tool-using skills. New objects intrigue him, and he always seems willing to experiment. Because he is fascinated by the actions of others in the group, he has the opportunity to learn through observation. And he is determined. A three-year-old is fairly well coordinated. Flint can already throw stones and use a branch as a club. Gilka still shares her mother's nest at night, but in the daytime she builds one in play, practicing the pattern she has so often observed. To both chimp and human children, a stone may be a plaything. Ten-year-old Figgin plays with a strychnos fruit. Play develops the chimpanzee's coordination and helps him to become familiar with the objects he uses as tools. When fully grown, a male chimpanzee may weigh over 100 pounds. He is much stronger than a man.
Mike, like the other adult males at Gombe, uses branches and stones to enhance his charging displays. But Mike was the only male to add this new element to his display repertoire. Using empty kerosene cans to make his display more impressive, Mike rose from very low status to the position of top ranking or alpha male. His bluff was superb. We finally removed the cans, but by then Mike had established his reputation. He held his position for six years. The branches and rocks which are brandished and hurled during charging displays are usually not directed at anyone in particular, but at times they may be deliberately aimed. Branch shaking is a threat. Here, a male persuades an unwilling female in estrus, or in heat, to follow him away from the group. A somewhat uninspired courtship, but it indicates Charlie's sexual interest in this female. After first presenting, Flint hits out at Mr. Wurzel. The use of potential weapons starts early and is often associated with social play. It is sometimes difficult to distinguish play from aggression, as when Flint throws a stick at the camera. Here, Flint may be only playing, but the baboon takes him seriously. This young baboon is not greatly impressed by the arm-waving threats of one infant chimp. But when another arrives, armed with a stick, the baboon shows a submissive put-back gesture and moves out of range. There are far more baboons than chimpanzees at Gombe, and there are occasional clashes between them. <laughs> The salt lick that we provided was appreciated by both chimpanzees and baboons. Fifi doesn't like this male baboon so close to her. But the baboon returns and Fifi reaches for a rock. When this incident took place, Flint, Fifi's younger brother, was watching. He imitates Fifi's clubbing movements. Fifi gets comfortable again at the salt lick and then Flint decides to put in some additional practice. It is October at Gombe, the start of six months of rain. For the chimpanzee, this is the beginning of the main termiting season for it is now that the reproductive termites grow wings and leave the nest to form new colonies. Worker termites extend tunnels to the surface of the mound, then seal them over until the weather is just right for flying. Ollie is headed for a termite mound. In her mouth, she carries two grass tools. She has picked them even before sighting the mound, a demonstration of true forethought. (laughs) 
other chimpanzees inspect the mound for recently closed tunnels. They first reopen a tunnel, then start probing. When insects drop off the tool or crawl out from the nest by themselves, they may be mopped up with the back of the hand or wrist. As Fifi watches, Pooch demonstrates that the proper termiting technique requires a delicate rotation of the wrist. Termiting tools become worn and bent and must be replaced. Some individuals find them close by. Flo is particular. She searches carefully some distance away, selecting several tools at once. Ollie moves even further from the heap to get a good, flexible length of vine. Often, twigs must be made into tools. Flint, eight months old, is too young to termite. But since his mother, like most females, spends long hours at the mounds, he must amuse himself as best he can. Nearby, his mother, Flo, works a good tunnel. And like all mothers, her work is often interrupted. These long hours beside their mothers at the mounds give youngsters much opportunity for learning termiting techniques. For minutes on end, Flint closely observes Flo as she works. And it isn't long until, in his play, he begins to imitate some of her behaviour. Flint is interested in Flo's catch. She's a firm mother, but tolerant of her own child. Gilka, however, is mildly punished for interfering. Ollie, Gilka's mother, leaves an unproductive tunnel. Gilka is an eager but inexperienced termiter. Ollie searches for a new place to begin and Gilka sets to work. Her tool is bent and she's troubled by a fly. Meanwhile, Ollie inspects one hole after another. Gilka isn't having any luck. She discards tool after tool as though they were to blame. Actually, she's probably working an empty tunnel. Across the mound, it looks as though Ollie is moving on. Gilka thinks she has the chance to work her mother's hole again. But no such luck. Gilka moves in once more, this time with an absurdly short tool. Like most chimpanzee mothers, Ollie doesn't punish her daughter's interference. Instead, she tickles her. Gilka laughs, and for the moment at least, is distracted.
In the early stages of their research, Dr. Goodall and her team used banana boxes to attract chimpanzees to their camp where they could be more closely observed. Fifi tries termiting for bananas. It doesn't work, but she demonstrates that chimpanzees can readily apply traditional tool using patterns to new situations. Flo makes a stick into a tool and tries to open this box. Figan learned to unlatch the cable that held this box door closed. He got all the bananas he wanted. We designed another box, electrically controlled and virtually chimp-proof. But still they tried. We used to put bananas in this box, too. Figgin can't open it, so he stripped a twig of its leaves and now pushes it in through an air hole. The smell tells him that this time the box is empty. Chimpanzees in the wild use leaves and grass to clean themselves. Pooch wipes sticky fruit juice from her hands. And Mike wipes his bottom. Flint has the right idea, but a somewhat inefficient tool. He tries another, but with no better success. Rainwater has collected in this tree bowl. Pooch can't reach it with her lips, so she picks a handful of leaves to make a sponge. Chewing the leaves makes them more absorbent. Pooch sucks water from her sponge while Fifi looks on. Without this tendency to watch a companion, observational learning, so important for tool use, could never occur. We made an artificial water bowl in this stump. Flint can't reach the water with his lips. And not much water sticks to his finger. In an attempt to get the water, Flint tries a number of different tool using patterns. First a stick, good for banana boxes, but of little help here. The grass termiting tool isn't much better until he starts to crumple it and so turns it into a sponge. Here, Fifi seems interested as her mother sponges up water in this hollow log, but then she moves off. Her brother Figan takes over a little later. Then he loses interest and moves away to play with a rock. Fifi comes back and eventually starts soaking up the water.
As Flo watches, Fifi loses her sponge in the log. She tries to retrieve it by termiting. It's not much use, but it clearly indicates that a chimpanzee readily turns to a tool in an attempt to solve a new problem. Dr. Goodall's research at Gombe has given scientists a unique insight into the chimpanzee's skill in using his environment. Chimpanzees use natural objects to build nests for sleeping, to make their displays more effective, and to intimidate. Chimpanzees use objects as tools to get food, to clean themselves, and to... They also use tools in solving new problems. We now know that these patterns may be passed from generation to generation by observational learning. The chimpanzee has his own primitive culture. <laughs> 